Hello everyone. Today, uh, in uh, today, in today's class, we will discuss the contributions of Ramon Loya, who is one of the uh, very important personality uh, in our uh, Indian freedom movement. Now, coming to uh, when we when we start talking about Ramon Loya, the first thing which comes into our mind is the Congress Socialist Party. In the last video, also we have discussed about Congress Socialist Party of J P Narayan. Same goes for this. He was also a co-founder with him, who we can call as the pioneer of socialist movement in India. Now coming to his ideology. Now in, uh, basically he was more of a Gandhian. Okay, so he had Gandhian ideas and values, but there was some kind of difference. That is, according to him, socialism is not only eradication of poverty. He told yes, socialism aim is eradication of poverty. Okay, that is one fact. But apart from this, there should be character building, a reform of an individual, synthesis of spiritualism and materialism. He used to say, "Ki first of all, to do this to eradicate poverty, if the government is doing something to eradicate poverty, first of all, you need to have a good character." Then he was more of adding the morality concept into uh, the socialism factor. The individual has to reform. There's always there should be a scope of change, and materialism and spiritualism there should be synthesis. There should not only we should go for materialism, not only we should go for spiritualism, but there should be a balance of this. So his concept of socialism was this: apart from eradication of poverty, these three things should also be there. Now he was a very uh, like he supported Gandhi, but he was a very rationalist. He supported in a very rationalist way. So he used Gandhian methods. Of Satyagraha in class struggle, that class discrimination was happening. So he was totally against that class struggle which was happening in the country, and for that he used Gandhian methods. Now finally, the concept of Saptakranti and its relevance in today's times. So his concept was Saptakranti. The seven things he told. So in mains, let me ask you to discuss the Saptakranti concept of Loya and its relevance in today's times. So when you discuss one one topic, side by side we will also consider that particular uh, topic's relevance in today's contemporary times. First of all, it talks about economic equality. Now when we talk about economic equality, yes, in today's time, economic equality is still near in the words of Adam. We do not have economic equality. You see, there is a rich poor divide always, and that poor thing comes from DPSPs because DPSPs are non-justiciable in nature. Directly, they are not justiciable. We have to bring proper uh, laws, and if yes, laws are there, not implemented properly, there is corruption. Chronic capitalism. Chronic capitalism is a nexus between bureaucrats, politicians, and businessmen. So, because of that nexus, the money is getting looted, and the sufferers are the poor people. So, that economic equality is not coming. Second, women emancipation or women empowerment. Now, women empowerment, uh, like we, it's a reality. Ki yes, that patriarchal mindset is still there in today's in today's uh, you can call it uh, in parents or uh, even urban uh, societies also have that patriarchal mindset. We can give reality less participation in workforce. There is very less participation in workforce, and that comes from patriarchal mindset. Less representation in legislature. Yes, there is a bill of 33 percent. Came very recent. We have that 33 percent bill, but it will be implemented after 2027. It's very recent now. So that patriarchal mindset is still there. Third, independence. Now, when we talk about independence, which is a part of Saptakranti concept, here it's not about political independence. Now, the independence connotation has changed now. In today's time, in contemporary times, it is new colonialism. It's a reality. We are still. Under the influence of Western culture, under the influence of Western culture, we need, need finance from Western countries. If you see climate change, for climate change we have Paris Agreement, but to need climate finance, that is from Western countries. It means there is some kind of dependence, be it a culture, be it from a finance point of view, we have that kind of. Dependence on Western countries. So, this concept of that today's time dependency, we 
we call it as blue that color is even small countries in africa which are very resource oriented they are controlled by developed countries like us because they give them soft loans to put their military bases in the african countries so this all concept is in the color is abolition of caste it is a reality because caste is still happening caste politics is a reality ending racial discrimination now this is the least thing which is happening in india but yes though in india it is less but in foreign countries it still exists fine right? now civil disobedience without violent abuse without for example recent agricultural bills protest were there yes you do protest but without but there it turned very violent in the red fort we all know that it turned very violent in the red fort freedom of thought thought to make freedom right to privacy right to privacy acknowledged by supreme court in put to some judgment freedom of thought we should have that right to privacy so that in private we, we can think whatever we whatever we feel like so that freedom of thought in today's time also uh, there are there are like uh, in uh, there are some examples many examples where people are getting arrested for talking anything against the government or against something so that freedom of thought needs to be there but yes it should be under a legal thing we can't go and tell anything but still that that freedom of thought he used to tell at that point of time it has relevance today also so uh, that's it for uh, uh, ramanand loya that is uh, his concept of saptakranti which may be asked in uh, mains that is discuss this saptakranti concept and also its relevance in today's time Thank you.